Hello and welcome to another one of our series in the Gems of the Algebra Kokonish. Um, so we're up to the Sedra of the Eskalon, that's the second Sedra, the second Parsha in the Book of Devorim um, in Deuteronomy. And at the beginning of the, the Sedra, we have, we'll start with our art scroll again, just to remind ourselves what we're up to. Um, the beginning of the Sedra of Eskanan, the Eskanan al Hashem, by Isahili Mor. So at that time, um, he, Moshe petitioned, begged, pleaded, repeatedly to God to be allowed to go into the land of Israel. He wanted to do this more than anything. Now, of course, it's not because he wanted to be a tourist and visit the beaches uh, or the beautiful scenery in the north of Israel and the mountains. No, he wanted to be able to go in and perform the mitzvahs that are unique and specific to people who live in the land of Israel. Uh, not being there means he couldn't perform those mitzvahs, and that's why he wanted to go in there. Fine. God says, no, you're not going in. Uh, instead, as he goes on to say, and to, to recall at that time, Hashem said, no, you will appoint Yeshua. Joshua becomes the new leader, the new king, if you like, of the Jewish people, the new carrier of the, the tradition of the Torah. Um, and then at, at the beginning of so this little section here, see that, oh, I'm sure you've got that, if you've got there, that little tiny section from there to there is telling that story. But the, the, the last posik there ends by saying, Beneshev, a big guy, the Jewish people lived in, stayed in the valley that they were in, Mol Beis Pa'or, opposite a place called Pa'or. Now that should be ringing bells, because we spoke about that just uh, a short while ago. Uh, that's the famous story of Pincus's intervention to stop a plague that killed uh, thousands and thousands of Jews. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's carry on and see what the next part of the Torah, the next five psukim say. Uh, Yisrael, Shema. Now it's Moshe speaking to, to the Jewish people. Having recalled the context, now he's speaking. Vat Yisrael, Shema is a el chukim be'elam shpatim. Now the Jewish people should listen to the laws and the statutes. Sher anachimat malamad eschem la'isis laman tichio. The one, those that I'm teaching you, in order you will live, and you come and you'll inherit the land. Um, sorry, uh, sorry, I missed a bit. And inherit the land. That's why this is live. Which the God of your fathers has is giving to you. Present tense, not past tense, is giving to you. Now, pause, and then, okay. New instruction. Don't add on to anything that I'm teaching you, to anything that's in the Torah, and conversely, nor detract from it, subtract from it, edit it. Um, so don't uh, do anything to add or subtract to the mitzvahs that I'm teaching you. And then it says, "Enechem haroes es asher also Hashem ba'al pa'or." You know what happened when God? What happened? With the story of Baal pa'or. So again, we come back to this reference to Baal pa'or and the, the the outbreak of revolt against Moshe. That's the story of Pinchas and Zimri and the avoiders or the idolatry the Jewish people got sucked into or were seduced into. It was a whole plot. Um, Okay, so they went after the whole Baal Pa'or and the whole thing that happened there. Whereas those who attached themselves and stayed firmly glued, super glued to Hashem, you survived. Okay, so the Alshach says here something very interesting. The reference at this point is going back to the story of Baal Pa'ar. Now, if you remember, we talked about this in one of our previous Gems of the Alshach. He points out that when God, or when the Torah recalls the, their uh, offense against God, it st- says there, Israel, the Israel, the Jewish people stay in a place called Shittim. And when they are there, then they get involved in this whole uh, Moabite woman seduction and idolatry thing. And the first two psukim so recall what the Israel did there, and there is no reaction from Hashem whatsoever. Strange. But then it goes on to say in the, in that Israel then go on to get involved with Baal Pa'ar and God's furious. Now, if you remember, the Alshik points out that an Antropod only uses the word Israel, which I've used as a generic term, in the second category. When God gets angry. In the first case, it says that the Am 
They um, get involved. Remember we talked about that? They um, get involved in the sin of idolatry and sexual immorality with the Moabite woman. And they cause them the am. No reaction from God. Because the am referred to the ordinary people, the people who are not sophisticated um, and therefore easily tripped up because they, were, they didn't know enough or they weren't committed enough. Or perhaps both. But the, the next verse, which talks about God being angry, it refers to Israel. That was the people who did know more and did know uh, uh, better, and they get involved in the idolatry of Baal Pa'ar, then God's very furious. Remember, we talked about that there. So here the Alshak says that's exactly what's going on in the reference that we're talking about here, because here it says, it talks about Baal Pa'ar, that's how it starts off. The Jewish people were in a valley in Pa'ar, so that's the theme that we're going to be exploring here. But then it offers the antidote, and it says, don't add on. Don't subtract. Hmm. So the Alshik says that formula of not adding in and not subtracting is addressing what went wrong to the two categories of, Jewish, of the Jewish people who got uh, involved in the disaster of Baal Pa'ur. The first people, and the, the formula there is being addressed, the first people just did basic idolatrous and sexual immorality stuff. And therefore it says, at Israel, so this is, Chapter 4, verse 1 of this week's part. Just keep focused on the laws that I've given you. Don't subtract from them. Which, of course, they did. And when they just said, well, that doesn't matter. And they got involved in all the stuff they shouldn't get involved with. That's the don't subtract side of the equation. The don't add to the equation is what the be, the, the people who should have acted better, who knew better, and knew much more, they added on. Well, why would that be adding on? So if you remember that, I think we discussed then, the particular form of serving that idol in Baal Pa'ur, which to them looked like insulting it, when they were invited by these Midianite women, who were the princesses, etc., they seemed to be coming to convert to Judaism, when they asked them to basically, in their eyes, insult spit on, as it were, uh, on the idol, which they thought, well, that's easy, fine, why not? Um, then, uh, actually, that was what they actually did, was the way that they served the idol. Um, there's two, says the Alshad, types of people who do things that are wrong, Jewishly. The first one are the people who just, you know, they know they're doing something wrong, but the second one are good people who do something wrong, but they think they're doing something right. That was the second category, which is why the, the Torah says here, and don't add on. Don't add on. Don't detract. Don't add on. Uh, you know, it says in our evening prayers, Mahosa HaSatan and Hash, the, one, the prayer called Hashkivinu, Mahosa HaSatan, remove the Satan from in front of us, Umi Achorina, and from behind us. Now, the imagery of removing the Satan from in front of you, that's very easy to understand. You're trying to move forward, and he's got his hand against your chest, or your shoulders, stopping you, pushing you backwards, and bringing you to a grinding halt. But it also says, and, and remove them from behind me as well, because sometimes the Satan can be pushing you to do too much to achieve too, what you think is okay, but too much too soon, in which case you'll, you'll equally collapse and equally not achieve what you're supposed to achieve. In both those cases, there's a danger. There's a danger from detracting from the Torah, which the first group of Jews did in the story of Balpar, but adding on. The other ones thought, you know, in spitting at this idol, <laughs> they think it's the way of, of celebrating it. Um, but no, we are, we are insulting it. Don't do that. Don't ever add your own perspective and try and make it to supersede God's perspective. And the Alshuk adds um, a very interesting um, comment here, because later on in, in, in Dvorim, there's the commandment for the king, it's in chapter 17, 17, if I remember correctly, and he says, there a king should not have, to, a Jewish king should not have too many wives, and there's a, a number of what represents too many wives, but as a general concept, don't have too many wives, don't have too much money, um, and I suppose, uh, because rather obviously, um, too much money corrupts, as everybody knows, as so does too many wives. And yet the wisest man who ever lived, Shlomo Melech, rationalized, and he was the wisest man, it says, because why? The Torah says why you shouldn't have too many wives. It says, because in order that they will not corrupt you and take you away from serving me. He said, well, that won't happen to me. I'm immune to that sort of thing. So I can, that halacha doesn't apply to me. No, no, no. 
Don't impose, superimpose your understanding over God's command, God's instruction, and God's understanding. Because even if you're as wise as Shlomo Melech, and I'm not, um, maybe you aren't either, he was the wisest man who ever lived. That very wisdom betrayed him because he thought he could rely on his wisdom. But the greatest human wisdom is nothing compared to the infinite wisdom of God. He says, don't have too many wise. And then the halacha discusses that, that rather the, the Talmud discusses that it gets fixed in halacha. That's the rule. You don't change the rule. Neither detract from the Torah or add to the Torah. Don't make your perception, your perspective, the one that you trust more than God's perception and God's perspective. Because you only see a bit and he sees the whole thing. A very important message. I wish you all a very good chance.